So the next video in our Safer Swallow series is all about mixed texture foods or two textured foods as they're sometimes called. So first of all, what are mixed texture foods and why are these, uh, they so challenging in particular for individuals with Parkinson's disease? Well, mixed texture foods are quite simply any food item that contains both a liquid portion and a solid portion together. So that would be something like a dry cereal with milk, liquid and solid, or um, a chunky broth-based soup with vegetables or meat or noodles, something that um, had a solid and a broth component in the soup, as well as fruit cocktail with syrup, and even a juicy piece of watermelon or a really juicy segment of orange is also considered uh, a mixed texture. Keep in mind as well that a pill with a sip of water is also a mixed texture. As much as you don't chew your medication, at least most of us don't, uh, you're still having a solid component in the mouth as well as a liquid, which is the water. So we'll go back to our handy dandy diagram again and explain why that is so problematic. We know that individuals with Parkinson's can have difficulty with motor control, and that can be also controlling the muscles of the mouth and the throat. And we know that um, there can be discoordination in the mouth phase or the oral phase, as well as the throat phase or the pharyngeal phase of the swallow. So what happens when you just take a solid into your mouth? You, uh, it goes into your mouth via the lips, and then of course your teeth and your tongue have to chop it all up into little bits, your saliva coats it, and eventually your uh, mouth does this really complicated movement to form it all into a nice cohesive ball or a bolus that maintains its shape uh, so that when you're ready to swallow it, it's just one piece that has to go down and you're not swallowing a million times different fragments. So when a liquid comes in your mouth, of course, liquids uh, don't hold their shape as easily. They run a lot faster than something like a pudding or a potato in your mouth. Um, so the mouth control muscles for a liquid are different than what you use for a solid. When you have a liquid in your mouth, your tongue literally has to kind of push up against the back of your throat in order to prevent any spillage into your throat before you're actually ready to swallow that liquid. So when you put a solid in your mouth and a liquid, like um, a spoonful of soup or dry cereal with milk, your mouth has to do two things. It's doubling the workload for those mouth muscles who already might be a bit compromised uh, with coordination, timeliness of movement, strength of movement. So while your mouth is busy preparing and forming that solid into a ball, it can be quite easy for liquid to, oops, inadvertently slip down into the airway before you are ready to actually swallow it. And when that happens, when your brain isn't ready for the swallow, it hasn't quite closed off the airway. This is the entrance to the airway. And when we're chewing and preparing the food, this airway is completely open. It's not until we swallow that the right muscular movements happen that close off this entrance to the airway and prevent anything from going down. So you can see that when there's a solid and a liquid, uh, the liquid gets away on you, oops, that it is uh, easier for something to slip down the wrong way into the lungs. So what can we do about that? We've talked about as well that it's important to have a balance in reducing aspiration risk and choking risk while also maintaining the best quality of life that we can for as long as we can. So to me, that means that there's always this risk benefit analysis between uh, an acceptable level of risk and doing what you can to reduce that risk, but also um, not having to eliminate so many of those food items that you really, really enjoy eating. So does that mean that you can't have your chicken noodle soup? You only have to have pureed or broth soups? Does that mean you can't have your cereal in the morning? Does that mean that um, you, know, you have to avoid um, that uh, fruit cocktail with the syrup that you really enjoy. 
if it's severe, maybe it might come to that, but there is a solution in the interim that you can try. So it quite simply, and I will show you with my dry cereal with milk here. So I've got some Cheerios with some milk on it. So what I do first is because crispy, crunchy uh, foods like hard Cheerios might be a little bit hard to swallow, what I do is I just let them soak for a few minutes and make sure they're a little bit moist. And then I alternate. So on the first spoon, I would only take uh, a spoonful of milk and I would swallow that, only putting a liquid in my mouth. On the next one, I would just drain off the liquid and the bite would only have my moist Cheerios, but not uh, the milk and the Cheerios on the spoon at the same time. So by alternating, you can still enjoy these food items, but you're eliminating that issue of putting a liquid and a solid in your mouth at the same time. Another thing you can do is just make sure that you are in a position where your chin is just tucked slightly down. And I'll go through this in another video. There is a big difference between having um, a position where your chin is slightly down to allow uh, gravity to keep food in the front of your mouth so it reduces the risk of that premature spillage in the back and doing a full-on you've probably heard chin tuck posture a full-on chin tuck posture is this it's chin to chest and that is only recommended um, if it has been definitively shown on x-ray or by your uh, speech pathologist assessment to be beneficial to you so I've, I've seen a lot on different forums. Just use a chin tuck. It helps. Yes, a slight little chin tuck to keep the food and liquid more anterior in the mouth to, to control it better is perfectly okay for anyone. But a full on proper chin tuck posture uh, is something that should only be used when recommended specifically by your speech pathologist. So as I mentioned previously, taking a pill with a big sip of water is also an example of a mixed texture in your mouth. Now, I'm not going to get too much into safe swallowing of medication because I think that deserves its own video and discussion in itself. Uh, but just be aware that if you are having trouble swallowing a pill with water, it could very well be that it's that mixed texture uh, situation happening. Um, and there are some things that you can do to make it easier to swallow depending on what difficulty you're having. But again, I will address that in another video. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. Please feel free to comment and let me know if there's anything else that I didn't clarify about this two texture or mixed te texture problem. And I'd be happy to answer those questions for you.